How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial video. In this video, we are going to be talking about the super helpful object drop file. That is the drop file object, which lets you drag and drop files into the patch. When you create the object, it's gonna look like this, this like weird box where you can drag and drop things into it. Let's not forget that this is called drop file and that's what the video is about. So I'm gonna create a comment called drop file, put it right there so we remember. And uh, we're just gonna get into it. Like I said, this object lets you drag and drop files into it. That's all it does. And then it's going to put out the path name of that folder through this outlet. So we can actually use the folder object, um, which is going to look for a path name of a folder. And once it sees that path name, it's going to read the files within that folder. So these two objects work hand in hand. Basically you drag and drop a folder into here, the path name comes out and this folder sees that it's a folder with that path name and it's gonna read all the files within that folder. All we gotta do then is attach that to a U menu. And just with this basic setup right here, you can drag and drop any folder in and have it auto load this U menu. We just need to real fast real real fast look at one thing which is that the folder uh object has this message here called types and actually if you want to you can check that the drop file also takes that same message so basically what that does is it lets us filter for specific types of file extension so if you wanted to only populate this u menu with dot mp4 uh, files and maybe there's like PNGs in there in that folder too, but you only want the MP4s. You can say types MP4, patch that into here, and now it's only going to read the MP4 files in our folder. But if you want it to look for all the potential file types, you just send it the types message. And that's it. You just types types into the folder and it's ready to go and I'm actually gonna get rid of that we're going to use a load mess object called type so that way when we open this patch for the first time that message types is automatically sent out through this patch core into the folder object and we don't have to worry about doing anything it'll be initialized for us and ready to go um, if you didn't send that message through uh, originally that's okay you can lock your patch double click the load mess object and it's the same thing the types message has come through this patch core our folder is now initialized to look for any and all potential file types all we got to do is drag and drop our folder into the drop file object so I uh, uh, have this here uh, folder of unity assets for some tutorial that I was watching about unity because I'm learning to do unity program and I'm just gonna drag and drop that folder into the drop file and you see now that yes, we have a folder of some PNG images. Uh, there's also a Photoshop one that totally works. It's all okay. All the full files that were in that folder that I just dragged and dropped are now in here as well. And we can now select any one of these files out of the unit menu and have that like loaded in to be a video and our video plan, whatever. It doesn't matter. Whatever you're trying to set your menu up for, uh, it should just be ready to go. I'm gonna create a jit.world. We're gonna give it the normal attributes that I always do for jit.world stuff, which is at floating one, at FSA one, at FS menu bar zero. And then I'm gonna also say at enable one, so it's just on and ready to go right away. We're going to create a jit.gl video plane to uh, draw the, our videos into our world that we just created at transform reset two. So the video plane goes to the edge of the window. And then we're going to create a jit.movie object, patch that into our video plane. And finally, we're going to say prepend read in its own object. So that way the read message is attached to the front of the file and the jit.movie will know to read in that file into the video plane. We just gotta take this middle outlet here, patch that into our prepend read. And then any one of these files I select now show up in our video plane. And you can see that in fact, it is doing that Here's a screenshot of a square game I was working on. Um, here's some sprites. Basically anything you selected and loaded, it should now show up. Um, and just like that, that's it. It's so, so simple, um, but so helpful for so many different reasons. That being said, there's still one more little trick I wanna show with this patch. And that is um, you might have done all of this and done everything I said correctly, and yet you're still not getting any video showing up in the jit.world window. That's totally possible. That might be happening to you. It especially might be happening 
if you took this patch and you tried to give it to somebody else for them to use, the videos and things might not be showing up properly. This comes down to Max's search path function. Um, files need to be within the search path of Max for in order for Max to know where to look to read the file in. Um, if you're new to that, it could be a little confusing, so we're just going to take it kind of slowly. If you click on the Options tab up here in the main toolbar, you see there's this bottom one called File Preferences. This is actually your list of search paths. So anywhere that you have a folder that has files in it that you want to load into Max, it's got to be in the search path of Max in order to work. And you see this last user path right here that I have uh, is my desktop, which is where my folder was located. So that's why I'm not having any issues right now uh, off the bat loading in these images. It's because my desktop where that folder is located is already in my search path. If it's not here for you, all you gotta do is click this add path button and then it's gonna come up with a blank uh, search path and then you can just click choose and go to wherever you have that file or folder located. Um, it's as simple as that. However, if you are giving your patch to somebody else for them to use, and it's like a nice clean patch and they've never used Max MSP before and you don't want them to have to fuss with this, um, there are other answers that we have to make this work. And it's actually also very simple. I'm gonna close out of that real fast. We're gonna give ourselves a little bit of space and we're going to create the relative path object, which converts an absolute path to a relative path. You don't really have to concern yourself with too much with that with what that means. Um, just know that the relative path uh, in Max uh, is relative to the Max application folder. It, it helps Max understand things in its own Max way. Now, what comes out of this outlet is the path name or the absolute path. So if we take our absolute path, run it through our relative path object, it now becomes relative to understand to Max and how Max understands things. We can then use the file path object and give it a name and a spot on the list. I'm gonna say 10 and patch this into here. Um, and actually we also need a prepend append message because we need to append our path into our search path. And with that set up, um, now you can drag and drop your folder in and it's automatically going to be added into this search path window. You don't have to manually do it. It will automatically be there. Um, the name will over here will be the name that you give it. So in my case, it will be called search and I said 10. So it's going to be the 10th number here. So where it says none, um, it probably says that because I use 10 a lot. Uh, so that one's constantly changing for me. You can see it's some random folder right now. I'm just going to uh, go back to my desktop uh, folder, redrag this Unity Assets folder in, and then if we go to the search path, you'll see now under 10, um, it still says no name, which is kind of weird, but you do see it does have the correct uh, uh, file path listed here, our desktop and our Unity Assets folder. And with that set up, now no matter what folder you drag and drop in, you shouldn't have any trouble trying to read any of the files out of it into the rest of your Max patch. So this works great uh, if you're trying to do things with video or pictures, as I'm showing here. Um, but it can also work with sound files if you're trying to load in uh, different sounds into buffers, anything like that. Basically, it is a great tool to set up um, this U menu for yourself to quickly change between files and assets or to make a really nice clean user interface for your patch for somebody else to use um, with their own files and assets. So super quick video, but hopefully very interesting. Hopefully you guys didn't know about this before and it all makes sense and now you learned something. If you did happen to learn something, please remember to like and subscribe because that's how I know you learned something. And on that note, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.